On 31st May, which was the last trading day before exit polls were announced, the Nifty 50 closed at 22,531. Now, because most exit polls predicted a huge victory for the incumbent government, on 3rd January, the Nifty 50 climbed to 23,264. That's a gain of 3.2%. But as the seat counting began, you all know what happened. Fear and anxiety quickly gripped the markets. Forget about winning with flying colors. At one time, it seemed the NDA government might lose its majority. The Nifty 50 crashed by almost 6% and closed at 21,885. The next day could have been rather worse had the NDA not secured a majority. But the BJP couldn't win a majority on its own, so the government now is a coalition. The new ministers were also sworn in recently and things look fine now. Even the market has hit a new high. But as you know, coalition politics has its own pulls and pushes that may translate into increased volatility for the years to come. So as an investor, what are your options to contain this volatility? Hello and welcome to ED Money's YouTube channel. Today, we will talk about how you can build a defensive portfolio that can weather market storms. We will discuss options for both stock and mutual fund investors. Let's start with how stock investors can build a defensive portfolio. To pick defensive stocks, it's first essential to understand what makes a stock defensive. We will discuss a number of factors here and I will also discuss some stocks as examples for each. So when you start researching, you can look for these factors in the stocks under consideration. However, know that neither the stock selection framework nor the stocks are recommendations. You must do your own research and due diligence. So the first factor is the nature of business. Traditionally, companies in sectors like consumer staples, healthcare and utilities are thought to be defensive. The logic behind this is quite simple. The demand for the products of these sectors tends to be more or less stable. So no matter what the economic, political or market scenario, you will need groceries. You will continue to have medicines and other healthcare products and services and you will certainly consume electricity and water. Now while this approach is somewhat subjective, it can very well be applied to determine whether a particular sector or stock can be considered defensive. For instance, based on this approach, would you consider the auto sector defensive? Well, maybe not, as its demand is rather discretionary. In most cases, you will postpone buying a two-wheeler or a car. Now, would you consider real estate defensive? Well, again, if the economy isn't doing well, the real estate market will naturally experience a slump. Now, apart from this subjective approach, there is one more way to get access to a list of defensive stocks and sectors, and that's the nifty non-cyclical consumer index. This index seeks to invest in non-cyclical businesses. Now, if you're not aware of what cyclical and non-cyclical businesses are, let me quickly explain. A cyclical business is one that is highly dependent on the economy. If the economy does well, so does a cyclical business. And if the economy hits a rough patch, a cyclical business is likely to be hit the hardest. The opposite of a cyclical business is a non-cyclical business and defensive stocks typically tend to be non-cyclical. So, a good starting point for identifying defensive stocks is to consider the constituents of the nifty non-cyclical consumer index. This index has 30 stocks at any given time. As of 31st May, the top sectors in this index were FMCG, consumer services, consumer durables and telecom. The top 10 stocks in this sector include Bharti Airtel, Hindustan Lever, ITC, Titan and others. Now you can dig deeper into this index and its constituents to get a ready-made list of defensive stocks. You can then use this list to research further. I have mentioned a link in the description that has details about this index. Okay, let's move to the next factor now. Steady revenues and profits amid difficult times. Now, when the economy is doing well, many companies can report good revenue and profit growth. A defensive stock is one that can do so amid challenging economic conditions too. Now the last severe economic crisis the world faced was during COVID. Due to lockdowns, the economy came to a standstill. The first quarter of FY21 was the most severe. 
So we checked which companies in the Nifty 50 reported higher revenue and profit growth on a year-on-year -year basis in the first quarter of FY21. In other words, which companies succeeded in bucking the slowdown trend? These companies can be called defensive in the true sense. You can use this list to pick defensive stocks for your portfolio after thoroughly scrutinizing the companies. Let's talk about the third factor now, which is beta. Now, beta measures the movement of a stock vis-a-vis -vis the broader market. A beta value of less than 1 indicates that the stock is less volatile than the market and a beta of more than 1 indicates a stock that is more volatile than the market. Now beta has a complex formula and calculation so you don't have to get into the details. You can hunt for online screeners that have a pre-calculated beta. Now on your screen are the top 10 stocks in the nifty 50 that have a beta of less than 1. Now apart from these factors, defensive stocks can also have other characteristics such as low debt, high ROE and ROCE, strong cash flows, strong management, an established brand, a competitive advantage of some kind, barriers to entry and consistent dividends. You can look for these aspects as well while picking defensive stocks. So to sum it up, consistent demand, steady revenues and profits, low volatility and fundamental strength are what you need to check when you hunt for defensives. Let's also see a couple of cautionary points now when you hunt for defensive stocks. Typically, defense stocks have high valuations. That's only natural as these stocks offer high predictability. So while you will likely have to shell out more for defensives, try not to overpay. Choose wisely. Secondly, a stock or sector's so-called defensiveness is not a permanent attribute. It can change depending on company specific, economic, social, country specific or macro factors. As an investor, you should keep an eye on such trends too. Let's now see how fund investors can build a defensive portfolio. As a mutual fund investor, you have four options to build a defensive portfolio. Let's discuss these four options one by one. The first option is rather straightforward. Increase the debt component in your portfolio. As an asset class, debt tends to be more stable than equity, so doing so can substantially reduce the portfolio's volatility. Now, a few months ago, we published a video on asset allocation. In our research, we found that increasing the debt allocation can substantially reduce risk without having much impact on the final corpus. Over 20 years, while the pure equity portfolio generated a corpus of about 97 lakhs, adding 20% debt resulted in a corpus of 94 lakhs. If one increased the debt allocation to 30%, the corpus became 93 lakh. And for the portfolio with 40% debt, the end corpus was about 90 lakh. So there wasn't much difference in the wealth accumulated between pure equity and equity debt portfolios. But there was a substantial improvement in the drawdown. For our purpose, a drawdown is a fall from the previous highs. For instance, amid the COVID-led crash, the 60-40 portfolio lost 18% of its value from its previous high as compared to a loss of 33% for the pure equity portfolio, 26% for the 80-20 portfolio and 22% for the 70-30 portfolio. Now, if you would like to know more about this research, you can watch our video on asset allocation. I have added its link in the description. Now, another related question to this point is if adding gold to the asset mix can also help contain portfolio volatility. In another video that we recently published, we discovered that adding gold can further improve your investment outcome, provided you can tactically enter and exit it. I have included the link of this video in the description as well, so do watch it. All right, let's now talk about the second option for a defensive portfolio, moving to less volatile equity categories. Now, over the last one year, mid and small caps have been on a tear. As of 7 June, the Nifty Mid Cap 150 Index has delivered over 54% returns and the Nifty Small Cap 250 Index has raised by about 57%. But on 4th June, as seed counting was underway, these two indices dipped by over 7% each. The point is that while mid and small caps tend to be very rewarding in bull runs, when the bears knock at the door, there are also the ones who take the deepest plunge. So if you have loaded up on mid and small caps over the last one year or so, it may be time to consider less volatile equity categories if you want a more defensive portfolio. Now the table on your screen shows the average three year rolling returns of the various equity categories along with the standard deviation or volatility of these returns. The higher the standard deviation, 
the more the volatility. Now, as expected, large cap funds are least volatile with a standard deviation of 3.95. At 8.42, small caps are most volatile. But the other side of the story is true as well. Large cap funds are also least rewarding and small cap funds are most rewarding. Now, you can use this data to adjust your equity exposure. For instance, if you have a lot of mid cap and small caps in your portfolio, you can consider shifting to a multi cap and large and mid cap funds to reduce the volatility. Of course, there can be no one size fits all answer to what changes you should make in your portfolio. So feel free to use this table as per your requirements. Now, because it's also possible to invest in passive equity funds, it would be worthwhile to check the return volatility picture of some prominent indices too. The Nifty 100 is the least volatile and the Nifty Small Cap 250 is the most volatile. The Nifty Next 50 has comparatively lower returns but higher volatility. The difference between the returns of mid cap and small cap indices isn't much, but there is a big difference in their volatility. This seems to make the Nifty mid cap 150 a better option than Nifty Small Cap 250. One can also compare the risk return profile of these indices with their active counterparts to check which offers a better balance. For instance, both the Nifty 50 and Nifty 100 have a better risk return profile than active large cap funds. In terms of three year rolling returns, they have delivered better returns at lower volatility. Now, this brings us to the third option for defensive portfolio investing in hybrid funds. Hybrid funds have a combination of equity and debt, so they tend to be less volatile than pure equity funds. There are seven hybrid fund categories, conservative hybrid funds, balanced hybrid funds, aggressive hybrid funds, balanced advantage funds, multi-asset allocation funds, arbitrage funds, and equity savings funds. But from a wealth creation perspective, only three are relevant, aggressive hybrid funds, balanced advantage funds and multi-asset allocation funds. The rest have a debt fund like profile. The balanced hybrid category has just two funds, which have also been launched quite recently. Huh. So let's check the risk return profiles of aggressive hybrid, balanced advantage and multi-asset funds. Balanced advantage funds turn out to be the least volatile. These funds dynamically adjust their equity debt exposure to limit portfolio volatility. These funds can be a good option to get equity-like returns without equity-like volatility. We recently explored this category in greater details, so you can watch this video too. The link is in the description. Now, these three hybrid categories are also less volatile than the Nifty 100, the least volatile equity option in terms of standard deviation of a three-year rolling returns. So, with hybrid funds, you can certainly have a more defensive portfolio. The automatic rebalancing these funds is a plus two. Let me explain how. If you have an equity debt portfolio, you will have to rebalance it from time to time to restore the desired allocation. That's not needed when you invest in hybrid funds. The fund itself will rebalance its portfolio. Secondly, when you rebalance an equity debt portfolio, you may have to pay tax on the resulting gains. But because mutual funds are passed through entities, when they rebalance their portfolios, there is no resulting tax incident. This makes hybrid funds a convenient an efficient investment option and of course they are less volatile too. Let's now talk about the fourth option for a defensive portfolio and that's low volatility funds. Low volatility funds are factor funds that are designed to reduce well volatility. Currently funds are available on three low volatility indices. Nifty Alpha Low Volatility 30, Nifty 100 Low Volatility 30 and BSC Low Volatility Index. Of these the Nifty indices have historical data available. So let's see their performances. The Nifty 100 low volatility 30 index comes at the top. It's less volatile and also more rewarding than the alpha low volatility 30 counterpart. As its name suggests, this index picks 30 low volatility stocks from the Nifty 100. Now, if we compare this index with hybrid funds, its volatility is like multi-asset allocation funds, but it's more rewarding than them. And if we compare it with the Nifty 100, it's better than that too both in terms of returns and the volatility of those returns. The Nifty Alpha Low Volatility 30 index derives from the Nifty 100 and the Nifty Midcap 50 indices. So it has a midcap component too, but it's behind the Nifty 100 in terms of both returns and volatility. So these were the four options for a defensive mutual fund portfolio. Let me put all the fund categories that are discussed together and arrange them by their volatility. This can provide you with a comprehensive picture of your options. Balanced Advantage Funds are the least volatile, 
followed by the nifty 100 low volatility 30 index and multi asset allocation funds. So you can use this table to first check where your fund lies and then you can adjust your portfolio to make it more defensive. Alternatively, you can build a defensive portfolio on the basis of this data. Of course, do consider your specific requirements too. And this brings us to the end of the video. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please share it with your friends and family. I'll be back soon with another insightful video. Till then, take care. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.